So I'm going to be um, drawing a shaded sphere from this image right here and using my um, value finder here to find values in the square by lining it up with the picture and then comparing the values here. So I can see like here I'm comparing a light value right here. This is like maybe the third step and then maybe a darker value you can see I can line up and try to figure out which values are some of the darker values. And my printer ink is a little greenish, so it's kind of not exactly the same. So if you do print out this image and use it to compare, then you want to try to print in black and white only. So um, you can see that cast shadow is actually my absolute darkest value. It's 9B here. And um, I might have like an 8B a little up here, or maybe that's even a 6B on the top of it. And then most of the sphere is somewhere within here. Um, I can see this side where it's really dark up here is about a 6B area when it's 6B pencil and it's um it's my eighth square there. So um, that's how you use the value finder. You can see down here it's a little bit lighter um, and it's somewhere between the fourth and the third squares there. So you can compare things with your value finder to help you. So the first thing I'm going to do is draw the um, sphere and I'm going to warm up my hand just by kind of moving in a circle without touching down and then when I feel comfortable I can touch down. And you might have some lines that are not quite right and that's fine. You just want to clean those up with your kneaded eraser. Touch down very lightly and I have the tools I'm going to be using for this video right here. Um, I have a chamois, a um, sanding pad to clean my stump, a stump here, and um, an 8B and 9B, and my white vinyl eraser, and my 4B pencil, and my kneaded eraser. So I'm going to take these off for a second because I'm going to rotate my page to fix my circle. So you want to rotate your page around and check your circle from different angles. To ensure that it looks actually circular and then I can clean up my lines, keep them light so you can clean them up. Can even ghost out the lines here a little bit by erasing. Okay, draw some back in a little bit here. This edge I'm losing. And sometimes I find the bottom edge is hard for me to draw um, unless it's upside down because it's easier to draw a curve this way for me. So if you find that there's an angle that's particularly weird for you, you might consider just flipping your page. So now um, I'm going to draw the table. So in my drawing, there's this like table back here and it goes through this the sphere kind of like here and then like back here. Um, if you want, you can use a roller for this part. It doesn't bother me. Um, you know, you can just draw with the ruler and then um, draw your part that goes down here. Okay, so that's my table and you want to erase the line that goes through. Okay. And I'm also going to draw now the um, cast shadow. So to figure out where the cast shadow is, I want to take my ruler and you can place it along your picture and you want to look where it hits the side of the, um, you want to place it along the side of the sphere and along the side of the shadow where it starts. And you can see that this is the angle. Um, if it helps you, you can even you print it out in your picture, you can even draw 
on top of it to kind of figure out what that angle might be. And then you can see on the other side, the shadow, it stops here, but then it kind of fades out a little there. I'm gonna use maybe this over here where the last part I see of it, I could use like there as the tip of my shadow. And maybe I should use the very end of it actually. All right, so it goes to about here. And you can see that my lines look almost parallel here. So um, what that means is, you know, eventually these should meet at a point in space, but they're really looking very parallel, so it must be a very far away point. So you're gonna to try to translate this onto your drawing. You can even, if your page is square, try to keep your drawing square with your page, I mean your image, and then you can transfer this here. And then try to keep this side the same. It's gonna be hard, but it's gonna be like something like this. So these lines represent lines that go to my light source. So your light source is somewhere up here. You can even draw if you want. I don't know if this will be in the picture, but I'm gonna draw like a little, little light and with little rays. That's supposed to be my light source right there. Okay, so that's my light source. Light's coming from this direction, all right? And um, so you can label that if you want, light source. All right, so now I wanna draw the cast shadow and I wanna look at about where it cuts through the sphere. It cuts through around here. So what I wanna do then is look at my sphere and see about, it cuts through about the bottom, maybe around there. And I wanna draw an oval that goes from this point all the way across. Now, to make your oval symmetrical, I highly recommend drawing a line through the middle of your oval. Now, I just freehanded that. You can use a ruler to draw your line if you want. Um, yeah, because mine, this doesn't look quite straight. So I could just use a ruler. And you can see that actually helps me a lot because it shows me that I was way too high with my shadow here. And I'm gonna raise that out. And I wanna draw, if I can, a oval within this point. And looking back at this now, I can see that there's like, there's basically like two ovals, right? There's a darker oval in here, and there's a kind of lighter oval over there. So. The full extent of this is that lighter oval that we saw. So you could even just try to, try to make this a little bigger. And the little oval doesn't go as far. Maybe ends around here. And you have to be careful because I can see that what's going on here is the points don't, the ends don't look the same. It's really hard with an oval to make it look right. Ovals are just super tricky. And you gotta look at the ends and see if your ends look similar. Okay, so that's pretty good. I wanna race out the oval that goes through my sphere now here because I don't want that to be part of my picture. I can erase the middle line, don't really need that um, anymore. All right, so now that I have, I have my sphere and my cast shadow, um, I can start shading this in, all right. So what I like to do is, in, is start with the darkest point. And the darkest point of this is going to be my cast shadow. And I do this in general when I work in drawings, just start with the absolute darkest area 
and this tends to help me um, just to see how dark I need to go. But you can also just develop things up to a true dark value. You don't have to do that. So I might just like start filling this in. I'm doing this with a 4B pencil and I probably want to do this for something much darker. Like I'm gonna use my 8B. Switch to the 9B just to get real dark. You can draw up the side of your 9B if you have a woodless pencil. And it's a little lighter at this edge here. And it fades off a little more. So what I'm going to do, I'm not sure what's on this stump. I have a dirty stump, so I'm going to clean it by rubbing back and forth. I'm going to do this not over my drawing because it's going to make my drawing dirty. So I'll just do it off camera here. I'm just rubbing it literally back and forth like this to clean it. Okay, now I'm going to use this to blend. I'm very aggressively using my stump here, pushing hard. You can see this first finger here is pushing here, and I'm really gripping this and pushing quite hard to really blend this area and then blend this other area over here. I went just a little outside there, the shape. So I've lost a little bit of this edge here. I can try to lighten some of this up. With a, I just rubbed my chamois over it. I'm gonna use here my kneaded eraser. And I wanna try to get this area back. So I'm gonna go back in here and darken a little bit more with my, this is a 9B. And the edges of this are a little bit blurry. So I can use my chamois to kind of create a little bit of a blurring effect here. I can, and then clean that up a little with a kneaded eraser along the edge. If you find you need a sharper point, you can always use, this is my white final top stuff eraser. If you have um, a white funnel eraser that is not like this, you can cut it into a little peak here with your X-Acto knife, if you have one, to get a sharp edge to use to clean up here. All right, so I'm also gonna lighten a little bit more, looks like in this area here and a little bit on this edge. Use a stump to blend that a little bit. Can lighten a little more. It's taken off too much. Okay. If 
feel like I'm losing my edge a little here. So I'm going back in. This is actually a 4B, and I'm gonna to try to sharpen the edge because my 4B has a sharper point than my other pencils. So I'm just gonna to try to sharpen this edge a little bit. All right, so now I wanna shade the rest of this sphere. And I'm gonna go in just with a lighter value across the whole thing, except for the highlighted area. I'm keeping a very light touch here, even lighter up here. Keep it real light up here. I'm avoiding the highlight area right there. And now you can take a stump, if it's clean, and mine may not be clean, so I'm just double check, make sure it's clean. And use your stump to blend. Now, you can also use a chamois to blend. And my lines are not particularly close together. If you want this to be way more consistent, then you want to have your lines closer together. The closer together your lines are, the more consistent it will be, and the less you'll have these little line marks here in your drawing. Um, actually, my stuff is already getting kind of dirty from this. So I want to really aggressively use the stump. I'm using circular motion. I'm just really working this here, particularly because I didn't put my lines extremely close together. <laughs> I'm going to have to do a little extra work to rub this out. Can rub in this area a little bit just to really even it out. Have really hard circular motions. You want this to look smooth, so. Okay, you can also take a chamois and just seriously rub this thing to try to get it smooth. Okay, that's a good first layer. So then I wanna go back in with another layer. So I'm gonna Try to sharpen this up a little bit too while I go in. Keep your lines close together if you can. Some people like to do a little tiny circle pattern. Some people find that that really works well for them and it leaves fewer strokes. Some people like to use like a, a more of a hatch, like you can see I'm doing here. It's really up to you how you want to do your, your pattern. You can use a small circular pattern if you like, or you can use a little bit of a hatch. But the key here is that I've already shaded, you know, a light area here, and I just want to work it up to about this area here, but not too far. So I want to see the here, I want to work it up to about here. Don't draw a line between your areas because if you start drawing lines between your areas, it's going to be hard to get rid of it. So I'm going to try to shade just a little bit here. You can see this, these kind of circles that I'm using. Um, you can use circles, like I said, and you can work a little bit up back here, maybe in a little bit more here. And then I want to use either my chamois or my stump to smooth that stuff out. So you can once again kind of rub this out a little bit. And see how that kind of blended in a little bit easier, the circles. And this is just one other layer, so now you want to keep going. It wasn't a very dark layer, so you might consider doing this next layer a little darker. You can use the circular marks. You can see I'm kind of working around the outside edge here. The circular marks. Just another coating, uh, I mean, layer of value. All 
All right, and with the sphere, I can see that I'm probably getting too much value here. You see how much lighter, if we look at this sphere, it's lighter here. So I probably want to like avoid doing too much here. So I want more value up top of here. So I can make little marks here, little marks. Try to get my value up there a little bit more. I'm using, you look how far back, by the way, I'm holding my pencil. I should point this out because I know we're online and I can't really see how far back you guys are holding your pencil. But if you want things to be light and delicate and gradually blend, you gotta hold your pencil pretty far back. I mean, seriously, I'm holding it like at the end of the pencil. Um, and it's just, you gotta learn to have a light touch. It's not only better for your drawings, um, but it's better for your hand. Less cramping, less pain. So I'm kind of working a little bit more in this area, and then I'm just gonna take my chamois and blend this out. A little bit more, you can see it needs to be maybe a little lighter here. I probably want a little dark, so I can either take my chamois and just remove a little bit more there. Kind of just pulling it off with my chamois. And I rotate my chamois around to find a clean area when I'm going in a light area like this. Um, you can also try to use a needed eraser to lighten this up, so I'm just lightening that. And I can at this point like look at my value finder and see how I'm doing. Let's check how I'm doing. So if I want to find out, okay, is this area pretty good? I want to hold my value finder up here and just see where it is approximately. And it looks like it's like the third step. So is this value about like that? Because mine was somewhere between the third. It's pretty good. It actually could be a tad darker. So that's interesting. And you'll notice that this sphere is a little bit lighter along the edge right there. So I probably can even test, and it's probably that value. You can see I might need to go a little bit lighter there. So you can use your value finder to test stuff. So I'm finding a clean area of this chamois and just lifting off here. Okay. Just lift it off with your chamois. If you don't have a chamois, you can use your stump um, to try to blend it, but you can, if you wanna take it off, take it off areas, you gotta use something like this, because the stump's not really gonna take it off as much as moving around. Um, so I kind of misspoke, but you can use like your kneaded eraser, and see how I've kind of made it into a, a fin or a pancake, and you can just kind of rub the pancake along the edge here. Rub that pancake shape, and it will, What's interesting is not only blend it, but lift off a little bit to just lighten your value a little bit there. Okay, so I probably lifted up a little too much. I can see in here I probably need a little bit more so I can make some small circular marks very lightly. And use my stump to blend it. Stump's getting too dirty. Be warned, be careful. You'll have to clean your stump many times probably during this. I'm cleaning it off off the screen because I don't want to get stuff on my page. Okay, now with it clean, you can go back in and use it to blend in a little more. All right, it's time to get some darker values here. My sphere. So I'm gonna work now on doing the edge and a darker value. And I could actually even switch pencils to do this if I wanted to. Um, right now I'm on a 4B pencil. I actually have a 6B pencil. Where's my 6B? I think this is a 6B right here. No, that's an 8B. Here's my 6B pencil. And um, I can use my 6B along the edge to create some darker values here. If you don't have a 6B, you would continue using your 4B. You could try an 8B. But you want to, you can see how much darker this is. And I'm like holding it, I can hold it like kind of basically about as far back. Um, so I can develop this a little bit lightly. And I wanna just create some value along the bottom edge that we're gonna build up. And the key here is, that, is we're gradually building up value in the sphere. Unlike the cast shadow that I knew that, that was black or really dark, this I know is a gradual blend. So I have to build up gradually. And um, so I'm just gonna keep building this up here. Just real gradually building this up with small little marks here. 
Okay, just trying to go along the edge a little bit here. Look where it's darker. Oh, it's darker up here. So I need to get darker up there. I need to get darker in here and along here and along this edge. So I can start applying a little more pressure here. Now we do have um, a reflected light. That's this light over here. It's lighter here, you can see, than it is right there. This is the darkest point of the spheres around here. And then it gets like a little bit lighter here, and then the lightest point is right. There's a lighter point here reflecting from back from the uh, table. So you don't want to get really too dark in this area. So if you can, start now trying to avoid that area a little bit more. And start really trying to just darken a little bit more in here. even start trying to define a little bit of an edge. Be careful, you don't want to outline this thing at all, so you want to avoid outlining. So it's best to just build up, and then if you can, even erase out an outline. That actually works pretty well. Um, but anyway, okay. So now I want to blend this out more. I'm going to use a little chamois actually to do that because that will probably work a little better. If you don't have a chamois, you can use an eyeglass cloth um, or you can even like a, you can use your stump and try to do it with your stump. The stump may not have as reliable kind of results as a chamois. Chamois is a large or smooth area. Um, but the stump can be very useful. I'm using my stump right now to go back in and kind of just blend some areas. Um, and you can see that I've made this area too dark. So I've got to lighten that up a little. And I'm going to also find this edge again with my eraser. All right, so um, how do I lighten that up? Well, I could use the chamois and just rub, or I could use my kneaded eraser. You might find that there's some areas of your paper that just take up more um, uh, um, graphite. They just take it in better somehow, and it could be that there's oil in the paper. Who knows what's what's going on? Um, there often is oil in the paper. I am actually placing my hand on my drawing, which is kind of a no-no, um, and that can create oil on your on your page, um, which can change your drawing for sure. So um, I actually just posted some a page on how to avoid smudging. So it's back in the um, contour line module, if you want to check that out. Because someone earlier this semester asked me, how do I avoid smudging? And I wrote a pretty thorough response, but I didn't really tell the rest of the class about it. Um, so it's now on there. Okay. All right, so need more. I'm going to lighten this up a little more with my pancake. And now I'm going to keep adding some more darker values. I'm going to go in here with my, um, this is a 6B, so I'm going to keep going maybe with my 6B and just build a little darker values here. And I'm going to avoid this area because it's got the, the highlight here and the reflective light. I can go a little bit into this area. Um, I don't want this sphere to ever become as dark really as my cast shadow. I mean, it's almost as dark actually on that edge. So just look at that. And actually the reason why you see this edge is because it's lighter behind it. So this is really interesting. So basically what this means is that eventually the sphere needs to be darker here and lighter right behind the sphere like along here in the cast shadow. And I'm just using a white vinyl eraser to get it lightened up because I got it real dark there. And then we can always blend it back in. 
just to show you that this needs to be a little lighter. I really worked that value in there. It's hard to get that out now. So this needs to be a little darker along here than what's behind it. Just a little. And then you can see that it gets, um, the sphere gets lighter. There's a kind of point where it's matching a little bit and then it gets lighter. Um, but I should add a little bit more value to the sphere here. I'm gonna work in those circular kind of marks that I was using before. Circular, not holding it too close. And maybe define this edge a little more. It's gonna get darker. And if you find that this assignment makes your chamois really, really, really dirty, you can always wash it, soap and water, and then just let it dry. Uh, this kind of weather here is so hot, it would probably dry very, very quickly. So I'm seeing here, I wanted to find this edge a little more. I'm erasing this out and I can put some value back in. And maybe also use my chamois here. I used to not require people to get a chamois, but the chamois is so amazing at what it can, in terms of what it can do in terms of blending that I started to require the chamois. Um, I believe it's required for this semester. And I know that people are buying so many supplies and it just can be very costly. So I try just to tell people to buy what I feel like is absolutely necessary to really get um, a su successful drawings. This is a chamois now and I'm working my chamois in a little bit here. You can see I'm getting a little darker gradual. Let's keep going. I'm actually going to switch, I think, to even, yeah, here's, here's an AB pencil. Let's switch to the AB. And I'm going to try to find this edge a little bit. I don't really want to outline. I want this to be defined by value. So what that means is I want to go to this edge and then darken in here to get rid of that outline that I've created. Circular marks. And chamois. This is my AP again. It got a little dark with this edge. You gotta be careful, but when you get dark too soon, sometimes it's hard to find it back. Kind of rubbing the chamois along it. And let's see, I might try to clean up this edge a little. And this edge, it's not blending as well as I'd like. Really rocking this um, <clears throat> stump along the edge here to get a curve. You can use your stump to shape your work a little bit more.
and blend this out a little bit. Oops, blend it a little bit over here, which I shouldn't have done. And then I'm going to define my edge a little more here. like I have a little too light right here. I don't know if you can see that in this area. I could go back in with my 4B and just kind of add some more circular values here. I'm not going in with an 8B of course because this is a lighter area and I'm drawing real lightly here and then I can take my chamois look for a clean spot if you can find one and blend that in. If you find that it's not enough add a little more. And I've also lost my highlight here, and you can get your highlight back by taking your kneaded eraser and just kind of rubbing it into the highlight area. And that should bring some of your highlight back. Your highlight is the widest point to this on the spear. It should be here. Then it should be a little bit uh, light, you know, it should be a little bit of value next to it. And then we have um, a, a lighter quarter tone here. So the little bit of value next to it is a lighter quarter tone, a light tone, sorry. And then we have um, lighter quarter tone. And then we have our half tone, which should be here. And I, I can see that I don't have much of a half tone. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to add more. Add it in. And then try and get my half tone between the lighter quarter tone here. Um, Next to the light and quarter tone, it's a half tone between that and my core shadow here. Adding a little more value. It's getting circular. Barely holding the pencil here, barely holding the pencil. Just want to point that out. Look where I'm holding it. Okay, so now I have my um, quarter tone here, and then you can see my core shadow, which definitely should go a little darker. Let's just do a little test here. Um, if I look at my picture here, it looks like it's this step right about there. Well, no, no, wait, it's actually even darker, sorry. It's probably actually almost the last step. It's either the eighth or ninth step here. I have it like there. So maybe there in that area. So I gotta go darker in this area um, for sure. And I'm gonna go back in with my 8B and just kind of try to work, keep working that area. Working in layers circular motion. Working in the core of the shadow right here and working along a little bit along here where it gets darker again and along this edge here. There's some intermediate value here. You can see that it gets back to like a half tone about here, maybe a little darker. You could always use your value scale to see what that, that value really is right there. Okay, now I'll try to blend out a little. All right. Um, I could probably go dark, way darker here on this edge, go darker into this core shadow. Clean up an edge here. You can clean up your edge by either drawing the edge a little bit, but not much. You have to try to match the value, which is hard. Or um, if you can, erasing out an edge. That's why this, this Tough Stuff eraser is so handy. And then you can use a kneaded eraser to clean up around it a little bit more. darkening a little bit here with my 4B. Have a little bit more control with my 4B. My 8B is a woodless, so it's not as sharp. My 4B is mechanical, which means it's got a really nice sharp edge, and that means I can get in here and get a much sharper defined hard edge on the side of my sphere. Put 
saving the value here to blend that in a little bit. A lighter value there, I see. And blend. All right. So that's pretty good. You should have a bright idea here. I'm just going to take a second to stop and check this in the camera. It's always a good idea to check your work by taking a picture of it. I know we're taking pictures for class, and that's great. But I often find once I take a picture of something that I change my mind on how it should look. I have to fix some things. There are always things that you have to fix that are in the picture. Oh, for example, I can even see right here something I have to fix. Um, this is not, like there's a little area right here where it's lighter. And I'm not really picking that up too much. And also this is like losing its round edge. And so I'm going to try to blend that in a little more. All right, maybe lighten this up. That should be... A little bit of a line there, which I don't really like. Take a stump and try to get rid of it. And clean up the edge of that shadow over there. So this should be lighter along the bottom here. There's a little highlight over here. I can actually even pull that out with my white final. If you want to pull out some more highlights, you can do so with your white final eraser. If you really feel like it needs to get a lot lighter. But bear in mind that that's going to be a sharp edge there. You would have to go back in with a chamois and kind of soften that up a little bit. All right. Let's check how this looks. So I can see when double checking this against the picture from a little bit of a distance that um, I got maybe a little, it's about as dark here as here, which in the picture it's not. So I probably could get a little darker in this area, maybe a little lighter here, a little more chamois rub. As I was kind of saying earlier in this video, this area seems to be sticking more with the um, material. That happens. Um, I also noted up this that maybe I could get a little more value in this area here. But it's pretty good. So um, I'm gonna be, I don't want to take up too much of your time. So let's just see if I can add a little more value. And then just blend it a little bit. All right, and we'll call this done. So let me um, now label it. Now I know that some of you guys aren't gonna to wanna to label this thing once you've, you've done this because um, you don't wanna ruin your drawing. You can always label it on the computer when you turn it in to me. You can just put a little label, um, you know, computer. You can draw your labels on the computer if you want, um, if you know how to do that. If you don't know how to do that, you could cut out little pieces of paper and use those and cut out a, make a little arrow and cut out the arrow and use those papers with an, an arrow to point out the parts. But I need you guys to label this for me. So um, I'm gonna do it real lightly. I'm just gonna do a line. And this is my highlight. I'm gonna do um, another line. And my quarter tone is about here, this area here. And then my half tone is going to be darker. You can see it gets a little darker here. And then um, the half tone might, might be more, actually way a little more like there, but that's okay. And then um, I want my core shadow, which is here. I just didn't realize I wasn't capitalizing core shadow. 
Okay, and then um, I want to label my cast shadow, which is here. So cast shadow, core shadow, what am I reflecting? Re reflecting, <laughs> what am I forgetting? My reflected light, what am I reflecting? My reflected light. All right, and that should be pretty good. I mean, my you can see that the way I've labeled this, like maybe my highlights should be a little lighter according to my own description. <laughs> um, I'm gonna make my highlight and be a little lighter. And then the core, the half uh, the core tone is pretty good. I was saying my half tone maybe could be um, pointing to an area that's a little darker than this, like um, half tone, or maybe my half tone actually should be just a little bit darker in there. Um, you can also see that what is this here, this value, this is actually also a half tone value here. All right, so that's the sphere.